Hello to parents, carers and students of Year 9. Our Year 9 students are about to embark on one of the most exciting points of their education. The time where they get to pick their Key Stage 4 options. Now this is exciting but also incredibly important and as a school we've put together an extensive programme of information and support to make sure our students pick the right choices for the right reasons. In this video, I'm going to give you some information about the Key Stage 4 curriculum, how it works, and how our students can make their option choices. So our Key Stage 4 curriculum is something that we're very proud of at Henley Bank High School. Our Key Stage 4 curriculum contains an incredibly broad range of subjects. We've thought long and hard about balancing the GCSE subjects with the vocational subjects to make sure that students have as much choice as possible. We've designed our process so that students can pick subjects that they're passionate about and will lead them to their next steps. And it's all important that everything we've done is so that students can make those right choices for the right reasons. So, what should year nine students consider when they're making their choices? So firstly, I want year nine students to think about those subjects that they're passionate about, that they enjoy, that they like seeing on their timetable. What are those subjects? I also want them to think about, you know, what are your future aspirations? What do you maybe want to study at sit form and at college? And for some of you, you might not know what you want to do yet. And that's absolutely fine. You're only in year nine. But if that's the case, make sure you pick a balance of subjects that keep your future options open. And that is really, really important. So I'd like you to think about those three things and parents and carers discuss those things with your, with your child while they're making these choices. So how is our Key Stage 4 curriculum structured? So we've structured it in two parts. Firstly, there are the core subjects. These are subjects that are needed to be studied by all students throughout their time with us. There's then the option subjects. These are the subjects that students are allowed to pick and I'll go through how many they can pick and what they need to consider when they're picking later in this presentation. So let's start with the core subjects and our core curriculum. All students will study English language, English literature, mathematics and science. All students will study double science and some students will pick to study triple science in the options process. We will also, students will also study uh, core PE, RS and PSHE. Although these subjects will not be examined, there will be lessons on the timetable for all, as these are really important to give our students a broad experience while they're at school. So these are the subjects in our core curriculum that are studied by all students. We then have our option process. Okay, now the first part of our option subjects are what we call our EBAC subjects. And every student in year nine must do at least one of these subjects. They're free to do more than one, but one of them they've got to pick. They are GCSE Geography, GCSE History, GCSE French, and GCSE Spanish. The reason we've asked students to pick one of these subjects is because they are brilliant sub facilitating subjects. Whatever you're going into or whatever you intend to go into when you're older, these subjects will open the doors for that. So picking one of these subjects is vitally important for your futures, and that's why we've um, mandated that all students do at least one of these subjects. And then we have our option block, okay? Now, this is what I've called our open option block. This is where you can pick any three of the subjects that are on the board behind me, as long as they're not the subjects you picked in the first option. Now you can see I've divided up the table into two parts. On the left of the table, I have GCSE subjects, which with the exception of art and DT, which have coursework elements, are assessed purely by examination at the end. And on the right, I have our vocational subjects. And in there, you might see some subjects um, that, that you might not have seen before. Vocational subjects have more coursework and are graded with a slightly different grading scale and also have fewer examination components than GCSEs. Now, you can seek advice as to which combination of subjects will be best to pick for you. And that's why I would urge you to speak to your teachers, speak to, um, speak to people you know, 
and also book an appointment with a member of the senior leadership team to make sure that you make those right decisions. So all students must pick three of these subjects. So in the GCSE subjects, we've got GCSE Geography, History, French and Spanish. We've also got triple science, and that is all students, like I said earlier in the presentation, will do double science. However, some people might want to do a third science GCSE, and that means you will end up with separate GCSEs in biology, chemistry and physics. There was GCSE Religious Studies, GCSE Art and GCSE Design Technology. And like I said, Art and Design Technology are slight exceptions as they include um, exam and coursework elements to their subjects. Then on the right, we've got um, the vocational subjects. So in our vocational subjects, we've got performing arts. Performing arts is what you might now know as drama. We've got hospitality and catering. That's what you might know as your food lessons. We've got digital IT. That's the same as the computing that you study at the moment. There is health and social care, which is a brand new subject that you won't have studied before lower down the school. There is enterprise, which is sometimes known as business studies, which is also another brand new subject. There is sport, which is um, the theory and practical elements of PE. And lastly, there is music practice. OK, so all students have got to pick three subjects here and one reserve. The reason we ask you for a reserve subject is we will try as much as possible to fit options into our curriculum and timetabling model. Unfortunately, there will be a small number of options that might not fit into this model. So we ask for a reserve just in case we can't fit those options into our curriculum model. But I would assure you, we do our utmost to make sure that all um, option choices are built into our curriculum model and students get exactly the options that they want. So as you can see from this slide, there is a wide range of choices that students can do. And it's really important that between now and the deadline for options, our students seek out as much information as possible. So what should we do now? Well, the first thing I'd ask you to do is on the school website where you found this video, I'd like you to watch the second video, which has been made by our heads of department, which explains in a bit more detail what each of the subjects are like. Accompanying that is the options booklet. The booklet also contains the information that I've gone through in this presentation, but also detailed information about each subject. So if you have any questions, that's your first place to start. Go and read those, um, the booklet and watch the video. If you're yet to do so, please ensure that you book um, a appointment with a member of the senior leadership team on either the 31st of January or the 1st of February. This is your opportunity to have a really detailed discussion um, with a member of the senior leadership team around the options that are right for your child. Um, and they might be able to offer you advice, guidance and support in that process. And if you still have questions following those, Go and seek out the teachers in the school that teach that subject, okay, and ask them the questions, all right? Because before you make these really important decisions, it is incredibly important that you are as well informed as possible. So when you're ready to submit your options, we try to make this as easy as we can. If you click down on the options page on the school website, you will find more details on exactly how to do this. But we have set it up on our MCAS um, system so parents can do it. We have also sent an email to students so that students can submit their options online. You only need to do this once, okay? And once you've done it, the options will be recorded onto our system. If you have any problems with this, please do not hesitate to contact myself um, or Miss Trigg and we will look into any option, um, any errors that have come to our option system. Also, if you submit options and change your mind before the deadline, please contact me as we can edit those all the way up to our deadline. And on our deadline, the deadline for submitting all options onto our online system is Friday the 8th of March. This is so that we have enough time to build our timetable and build our curriculum for next year making sure that crucially all of those option choices 
as much as we possibly can are matched up. But like I said to you earlier, there will be a small number of options that won't fit into our model. And if that is the case, I will be in contact on an individual basis. So there we are. That is the option process at Henley Bank High School. An incredibly broad and exciting options um, curriculum, and I'm really proud of it. So what I'd like you to do now is remember, go on to the website and look at the options video from the subject leads and look at read the booklet in detail and then go and talk to people. Finally, make sure you've got that appointment booked for either Wednesday the 31st or Thursday the 1st of February so that you can have those conversations with the senior leadership team. I'm really looking forward to working with Year 9, making sure that they pick the right options for the right reasons. I'm incredibly excited by this and I hope you are too.